to A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast. Well, isn't it a most exciting, fabulous time of the year? Santa's almost here. So I hope you've all been good and, you know, been not on the naughty list. I know I'm sort of verge of being on the naughty list. I think sometimes I don't know that I'm as good as I could be. But look, hey, that's part of being human, isn't it? So this week, it's a really big show. It's a, an exciting show because it's, you know, our last show before Christmas. And I just want to take the opportunity to wish everybody a very, very Merry Christmas and a very prosperous New Year. So the Simply Tarot card of the week this week is the Sun card. Now, the Sun card is the card that represents legal marriage. You know, the one where you go to the church or you go down to the city hall or whatever, where you actually get the piece of paper that says you are legally married. The secondary meaning of this card is happiness and bright prospects. And I actually thought this was a lovely card to come out just before Christmas, meaning that maybe, just maybe, we're going to have a really happy, prosperous, bright prospects, you know, lots of fun around the Christmas table this year. Maybe that, you know, everybody's going to forget their grievances, the things that they, you know, were going to say to somebody and just have a jolly old time for change. I think we could all do with that. 2023 has been a tumultuous year in many ways for many families. It's been a real readjustment after we came out of COVID. It's about getting our lives back into balance. And then we've had cost of living pressures all around the world. Nobody's escaped that. And whether or not that you've found that, you know, you haven't got enough money in your bank account or whether you've got plenty in your bank account, it's still been a little bit of a struggle. And a bigger struggle for many, many families is they try and adjust to what's considered the new normal and then, you know, to adjust to rising costs and every time you turn around, something costs more than it did last week. So let's hope now that we can put all that behind us, at least just for the festive period and just relax and have a little bit of happiness. Spend the time with the people that we care about the most, our family, our friends, the people that are important to us and really enjoy what the season's about. To me, it's not about the gift giving, it's about the time that we spend and invest with other people and just being able to reflect and be happy to see everybody at the table together and sort of the, know that we've all got our health, we've all got our health happiness, but also to spare a minute or two or half an hour or whatever it may be to remember those that are no longer with us. And, you know, maybe start some new traditions this year, like sort of talking about the people that are no longer with us, some of the things that they used to bring to the Christmas table, whether they were good, bad or indifferent, you know, let's start some new traditions this year. So I hope that each and every one of you have a very, very happy Christmas. Okay, so astrologically speaking, the sun's still in Sagittarius, not for much longer now, but we've got a couple more days of the sun being in Sag before he moves into Capricorn. And or she moves into Capricorn, whichever way you want to look at the planet. I, I always call them he's, but that's just slip of the tongue, I suppose. So the sun is actually conjunct or holding hands with Mars, the planet of action at the moment. So I'm going to ask each and every star sign to be a little bit careful about what comes out of their mouth. Now, it's great that the Sagittarian energy is about truth and honesty and speaking your mind and being very upfront, but sometimes it's not always the best answer. Sometimes we can hurt somebody else by being so blunt. Instead of giving a little bit of a pause and thinking about how we're going to phrase the sentence or how we're going to answer that question, we just go feet first in and sort of, oh, well, what the heck it said now, that's that's the end of it. So Mars is sort of here a little bit on the aggressive side because Mars tends to do things at 100 mile an hour and doesn't know when to stop and only knows two speeds fast and stop and it's usually fast is the direction of Mars. So. I'm just asking you to just be a little bit careful. If you're going to have a couple of little, you know, drinks over the Christmas holidays, make sure that, you know, your your mouth doesn't sort of just run off without thinking. It's really, really important. I want this Christmas to be very, very happy and the happiest it can be for everybody. So just be aware of Mars here. I mean, on the flip side of Mars, this can create a really wonderful, fun-loving, high-energy sort of parties and get-togethers where everybody's up laughing and dancing and drinking and enjoying the time and playing with the kids and getting the old board games out of the closet and things like that and just having a very jolly time. So let's hope that's how Mars works for you. Now we have Mercury, the planet of communication, and we quite often talk about Mercury here on the show because Mercury is such a, a dominant planet in each and every one of our charts that it's something that we, we can't ignore. We all communicate on a daily basis, whether it's we talk, we send messages, we send 
text messages, emojis, whatever the case may be, we're all communicating. Now, Mercury grows retrograde or seemingly goes backwards three times a year. Now, each time that that happens, I always send out a warning to everybody, be very, very careful of what you say, what you do under a Mercury retrograde. Well, we're actually under a Mercury retrograde at the moment. Mercury went retrograde on December 13 and will be there until the first of the new year. So it's right over this Christmas period. It's in Capricorn. Now, anytime Mercury's in Capricorn, I always affectionately call it, it's like the school teacher with the red pen saying, yes, you got that right. No, you got that wrong. You got that wrong. You got that wrong. So it's it, we have a habit and it doesn't matter what your star sign is. When Mercury's in retrograde, we have this terrible bad habit that we want to correct people. If they're telling a story and the details aren't quite verbatim, we interrupt and we correct them. Now, maybe that, you know, under normal circumstances might be acceptable. I'm going to suggest to you over the Christmas period, if somebody's spinning a yarn or telling a story and it's not quite correct, what does it matter? It's their story. It's their interpretation of the truth. Let them have the little bit of limelight and the little bit of spotlight. What does it matter? As long as it's not hurting anybody or rewriting history in a way that's detrimental to someone, then just let it slide. So we have to be careful because our communication can be a little bit misconstrued over this period. You know, sometimes people won't have their listening ears on or they only hear what they think they hear and not exactly what they heard. So just be very clear, be very concise with your communication, particularly if it's a tricky situation. I'd be suggesting to leave it till after the first of the new year and just sort of enjoy this period. Let's try and have a stress-free holiday season with, you know, everybody having a good time. You know, this is, you know, the perfect time to sort of do a little bit of analysation of yourself if you've got the spare minute or two and reflect back on your year and what you've achieved and what you hope to achieve and what you can put into next year's basket of achievements. So Mercury in Capricorn is always about, you know, being very, very truthful. It's something that sort of can can be a little bit difficult and a little bit tricky at this time of the year. On a broader scale, Mercury in Capricorn represents everything that's official in our lives, police departments, hospitals, doctors, insurance companies, anything that's got an official nature. This is not the perfect time to be signing a contract or signing legal or government papers unless you absolutely have to. If you have to do that sort of situation, if you have to deal with something on a legal or government matter, please read it out aloud, read it out to yourself. That way you might pick up if there's a mistake there, if there's a wrong figure on a contract or whatever, just make sure that you fully understand what you're signing. A lot of times, and particularly with it being busy and Christmas, people take out short-term loans or apply for credit cards or something like that to help them over the expensive period, they don't read the fine print. And this is one of those times where Mercury retrograde, you can get caught up in the, the, the excitement of what you're doing that you don't read the fine print and hang on a minute, when the bill comes in, the interest is twice as high as what you thought. And you've, you've signed the agreement, so you've got, haven't got a legal leg to stand on. So please just be careful, 13th of December through to January 1. So we also have Venus, the planet of love and affection at the moment is sitting in what, a lot of astrologers consider the sexy sign, the Scorpio sign, that, you know, if you were lucky enough to be born with Venus in Scorpio, you're very attractive to the opposite sex. Yes, that can be the case. But when Venus is in, in Scorpio, to me, it says that any new relationships that start under this time may be very intense. So we need to be very aware that it's the type of relationship that you're aiming for, or the type of relationship that you want to attract. Venus is actually sitting at opposite ends to the planet Uranus of the unusual and unexpected sitting in Taurus. So what this means is that love affairs can start under the most unusual of circumstances in places that we never thought we'd find love. You could be taking your elderly mother or grandmother or something to church and not really wanting to go. It's not your cup of tea, but she likes to go to the Christmas service and you go and you sit next to somebody and they drop their you know, hymn book on the floor or something, bend down to pick it up and bang, the magic starts. It can be something as unusual and unexpected like that. Just to make sure that, you know, you take the time to get to know the person that you might meet over this holiday season, if you do meet somebody new. If you are in an existing relationship, it's it's the time to sort of be a little bit more patient with your partner. Don't expect that they just know everything that you expect of them. Sometimes we have to spell it out and do it in a gentle way. Don't do it in a bossy sort of way or a cranky sort of way. Do it in a way that's sort of kind and loving and sort of suggesting that them, you know, hey, hang on a minute, maybe I don't like that particular outfit on you. It doesn't do you justice. It doesn't bring the colour out in your eyes. Find something nice to say about it. Don't just, I don't like it, put something else on. 
on, you know, find a different way of communicating with your partner. And I think then things will be sort of a lot easier to deal with. We still have sat in the planet of discipline sitting in the early stages of Pisces. So that is starting to affect a lot of the water signs. They're finding a few little restrictions or things that they've got to do or things that they weren't expecting cropping up in their lives and, and, and requiring sort of urgent attention that you drop things and get to it fairly quickly. But that's important because, you know, particularly for the Pisces, the Cancers, and the Scorpios, they need to, to deal and, and address these things promptly. Don't put them off because the longer you put them off, the harder it's going to be to bring things back on track. The opposite sign is also Virgo, so just be aware of that. But it can filter on to all the other remaining eight signs as well, maybe not to the same degree, but if you've got to sign anything official or legal, make sure you read the fine print very, very carefully. We also have Neptune, the planet of creativity and happiness and songwriting and painting and decorating and all those exciting things. Yes, I know, it can also be the planet of illusion and delusion too, but I was going to water that down. It's Christmas after all. Still sitting in the last few degrees of Pisces, so it's sort of wrapping up there with a lot of creativity. I mean, I think you're going to find in 2024, we're going to have a barrage of some really, really a brilliant new songs that are going to come to the marketplace that people have been writing during this very creative period and are just sort of fine tuning them and getting them ready for the market, which is nice. And to wrap it up, we've got Pluto still sitting in Capricorn, been sitting there since 2008. Pluto was in the, the last weeks of sitting in Capricorn. So this is when Pluto is really going to intensify his energy and his magic and try and bring things to a close. You know, we've got a lot of action happening in the Middle East where, you know, people are stepping in trying to resolve that conflict there. Unfortunately, it's taken Ukraine off the front page a little bit, but let's hope we get some breakthroughs there. Wouldn't it be nice to sort of see maybe that we could head into 2024 with the hope of world peace? That would be an amazing thing. You know, there's lots of things that need to be done around the world. And at this time of the year, I think of that song, Don't They Know It's Christmas. I always sort of think of that and what's changed in the time since that song came out by Bob Geldof. Really not a lot. You know, we haven't got a lot to be proud for proud of in that department. But anyway, we're going to take our first caller, which is Deborah in Stafford in Arizona. Are you there, Deborah? Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, Deborah. How can I help you? I have got a lot of curiosity with my life and um, kind of where it's headed. Okay, so you've got a lot of issues going on in your life at the moment that you sort of really can't see the way clear. Is that how you're seeing it, Deborah? Yeah, there's. I've got, I think, more issues than one person should have ever. Well, I'm sorry to a hear that. Because nobody deserves to have more than what, you know, than we all should have yeah, exactly. sharing in our lives. But the first thing that they're sharing with me, Deborah, is that things are coming to a close the overwhelming insurmountable sort of issues that you've been that have been dumped on you particularly in this last 18 months are now starting to sort of wind down a little bit you may not feel that yet you may not feel that anything's sort of starting to leave you or even looking like coming to a close but let me assure you from what they're showing me from from the other side is that things are starting to break up things are starting to to get some light on the situation so that we can start to sort of move forward it's interesting because they're showing me even though things are starting to progress, you're not going to really feel like you've made any great progress that you can measure till about the end of March, early April. Now, I'm not saying that you won't feel some little glimmers of hope between now and then, but it's sort of like by then you sort of sit back and you say, wow, I can see how far I've come in the last few months. And it's quite exciting to see that so much progress has been made. 2024 is going to be a much stronger year for you where a lot of things will start to sort themselves out. You will start to be able to put yourself first for the first time in a very, very, very long time. Are you making changes to where you're living or are you planning on moving? Because they keep showing me I'm that. Planning. Going... You what's I'm ready? planning on moving. Yeah, I'm planning right. on moving uh, next year, if that all possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, look, I feel that would happen. I don't know that it can happen before March, but I was sort of looking more towards the middle of the year when the weather was a bit warmer. The opportunity okay. then will, will present itself in a way that it'll be much, much easier to be able to make that transition. The next place that you move to, Deborah, let me assure you, you're going to be a lot happier. You're going to feel a lot freer in yourself. 
I'm not saying all of a sudden all your money worries will be gone, but I'm going to suggest to you that things will be even easier on a financial front. It's like you can see the, the light at the end of the tunnel and you haven't been able to see that for a very long time. The other thing that they're showing me too is that you haven't been too hard on the people that you let go of. The people that you've taken out of your life, they, that was necessary. You know, there was too many people that I think just came and dumped all their, their dirty laundry at your doorstep and never took responsibility for anything, did they? They expected you to, to right. magically make their lives right. Right. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so don't look backwards. Don't look back and think, oh, maybe I was a bit too tough. No, you took the appropriate action at the time when it got to a point of no return that there was no other angle, but you had to do that. And you just have to stand by that now and sort of say, okay, well, I did what I had to do. It mightn't have been what you wanted to do, but it was the only decision that you could make at the time. And, and that's a good right. thing because you had to clear a lot of these I don't even want to put a label on them. They were they were like parasites. They were sucking the life out of you. Yeah, they, that's very true. Yeah, it's and very you true. Don't, need you don't need that anymore. You need people that want to be with you, that want to bring something to the table, Deborah, not take it off the table. You know, friendships and need to be, you know, friendships and family need to be a two-way street. It's a give and take situation. It's not somebody doing all the taking and you giving, doing all the giving. The other thing I want to share with you is they keep giving me this most beautiful big, big pink bunch of, of roses. Now, usually when they show me that from spirit, it's their way of showing their love, of sort of trying to show you that they're with you, they're there, they see your pain, that they're, they're showing you that life is going to become so much better, so much easier. So I would take that as a, a really nice gift in this Christmas week from the other side that all the dearly departed people that you've lost over the years that you still miss have got together and got you the most huge bunch of pink roses as their way of saying they love you. So Merry Christmas and I know next year's going to be better for you, Deborah. We're going to talk with Rosalind now in Richmond in Virginia. Are you there, Rosalind? Hello. Hi, Rosalind. How can I help you? Do you have a question I can answer for you, sweetie? Hi, I'm just, oh, okay, with whatever you're drawn to. You're just wanting to what, to know what, sweetie? Whatever you're drawn to, just a general message. Oh, okay, all right. All right, I'll give you what I get from the other side. Okay, the first thing that they're showing me is that you need to stand up for yourself a little bit more. Have you been sort of not sort of speaking your mind a little bit too much this year, Rosalind? Have you sort of been sitting back and just sort of, seeing how things unfold have you because they're saying to me they want to see you speak up for yourself a little bit more mm -hmm. in the beginning i was i think i kind of am i'm doing a little bit better with that now mm -hmm. yeah well they're saying to me look you don't have to be bossy and bombastic about it but they just want you to to speak up if something's important to you that they want you to have an opinion and and speak your mind and say well this is where i stand you don't need to be nasty about it and by doing that you're going to start to open the pathway to a a lot better future for yourself because it's sort of like I look I appreciate things got overwhelming and you got tired and got busy and you know you didn't you know there were certain times there where you didn't feel it was appropriate to speak up or it was the wrong time or it wouldn't have made any difference so but they're showing me the early part of 24 the first four months of 24 will give you those opportunities to speak up to sort of push yourself to the front of the queue again and that's good because that's what needs to happen they're also sort of showing me that your energy levels have been very erratic over 2023 I'm going to say they're going to improve and it's not necessarily any one particular thing that you've done. It's a combination of things, but a lot of it I think is going to be the fact that you're handling the stresses of life better than what you were. It's sort of like you're not allowing things to to sit on top of you anymore and drain your energy. So that's why I think your energy levels are going to start to become a little bit better. They're also showing me from about May next year that the whole of your life is going to start to unfold. It's like the pathways are clearing. The direction ahead is going to be sort of like in a straight line instead of all these wiggles and diversions and whatever, and that's good. So did you lose somebody this year that really knocked the stuffing out of you? Did you? Was there somebody that passed away that, you haven't really had time to sort of process their passing yet? Um, it wasn't this year. It was actually in 21, but yes. Yeah. yeah, but it, to me, it still feels very raw. 
It's like it I is. haven't had time to, to go there yet. And it's like they're, they're, they're sort of saying to me, you've got to make some time, even if it's only five minutes a day to, 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 to go there, to allow yourself to grieve. You know, sometimes I think life gets in the road and we don't have time or we've got so many other things that need our attention. We don't give ourselves the luxury of time to process that and, and have our tears. And our tears are important because it's our way of helping us cope with the grief and work through our grief. It's sort of, it's not to be shoved in the closet and we'll deal with it one day because when it, the closet door does open, sometimes then we have a job trying to contain it. So they're showing me that, you know, you will have that opportunity to be able to work through those emotions. 2024 is going to be a much brighter year for you. It's like you're coming out of the darkness into the light and it's not necessarily that you're doing something better or different. It's just what you've been able to work on in 2023. You're going to see the rewards in early part of 2024, which is good because it has been a really difficult year for you. It hasn't been a year where you've had a lot to smile about. And yet surprisingly That's enough, true. Rosalind, you've still stayed buoyant and you've still tried to remain positive and, you know, put your best smile on when you go out and sort of, you haven't sort of really shown the world how difficult it's been for you. You know, you've, you've sort of kept that to yourself. And I think you should give yourself a packet of gold stars for that. You've really done well. This has been a really tumultuous year. I mean, I could take, mm. you know, the last three or four years have been... It, really difficult and each year has been more difficult than the one before you get to the end of the year and you think oh thank goodness that day with next year will be better and then the next year rolls on that sort of for whatever reason seems more intense more overwhelming more to deal with than what you did the last year and you think oh gee okay so you just keep going you, you sort of don't stop and try and analyze it because if you do you might slide down the the hill and never get up again but I am pleased to say next year is going to be very different and it's not just because I've told you that that's what they're showing me that things will start to clear and you know you'll have time to be able to breathe and smile and just enjoy life and and that's a good thing so there will be loads of changes next year but the changes that are happening are going to be positive they might come fast but they'll be positive and they'll end up being for your own good which is a good thing so is there someone special in your life right now? Um, no, not at the moment. No, but they keep showing me a ginormous big pink heart. And usually when they show me that, it usually means new love coming in. That's why I asked whether there was someone special because they're showing me this heart. It's oversized. It's sort of like it's taking up the whole of my screen for you that, you know, this is what they want to bring forward. And they want you to know that you're going to know what love is. You're going to be cherished mm. and loved and be in a, a really stable situation with somebody that you can depend on. You've never had too many people in your life that you could depend on, Rosalind. That's true. You know, every time That's you sort true. of allow yourself to think maybe this person I can rely on or depend on, they do something that takes them out of the equation and sort of you've just learnt to rely on me, myself and I. Well, that's going to change and it's a good thing. It's going to be a beautiful feeling to have somebody to share the journey with and somebody that you know that genuinely has your back, that genuinely wants the best for you, that genuinely wants to take half the load or more than half the load and, and keep you strong and happy again. And that's good. So I can't speak highly enough about, you know, next year for you is, is going to be probably one of the best years of your life that you've ever had, Rosalind, and it's well-deserved. So I hope that's answered everything you wanted to know. Yes, it sounds great. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very, very welcome. And it's just so nice to see that you're going to have sort of such a nice year after such a, a very, very long, hard time, but particularly this last four years. But I could go further back than that, but it's just sort of like there's been hardly any light in your life for such a long time and it's just so well-deserved. But enjoy this new man. All I can tell you about him is he's got a cheeky smile, he's a lovely man, he's a hard worker, and he's going to think you're the absolute princess of the world. And you can't ask for Aww. more than that. So anyway, okay. Rosalind, have a very wonderful Christmas with your family and friends and we'll look forward to talking to you next year. So it's really interesting at this time of the year because this is when it brings up the, the people that we've lost, the things that haven't happened this year, the things that we wanted to happen. We look back with the year with sometimes with mixed emotions or oh, I could have done this better or that better. Let me assure you that we all do precisely what we're meant to do, even if it didn't work out on our timetable or what we thought was meant to happen. None of us ever really make a mistake. 
we do the very best with what we can at the time. The decisions we make are the very best decisions we can make at that moment in time. Six months down the track, we might have a different version of it and think, oh, gee, if I'd done this or I'd done that. But remember, we only had a certain amount of tools in our toolkit at the time, and we made the best and most informed decision we could then. So try not to live your life with regrets. Look at it. everything that's happened in your life as a learning curve, as a lesson, is, is getting you to where you are now. If you didn't have these stepping stones through life, you wouldn't be precisely where you are at this second. That took me a long time to learn that we can't control our lives, that our lives are mapped out for us. Where our free will comes in is when we get to the intersection, we can either turn right or we can turn left. That's our choice. But getting us to that point that it's then we, we get the opportunity to make the decision, even if it is something as simple as whether to turn left or right, at that precise time in our lives. So, you know, we've all had a tumultuous year in one form or another, some of us harder than others, and it's a time now to sort of sit back, have a bit of relaxation, put on a Christmas movie, put your favourite music on the turntable and just really enjoy what this season is about. It's about you know, winding down a little bit, celebrating the fact that we're all still breathing, we're still here. Whether you've got loads of money or you've got very little money, it's not about money. It's about enjoying the people that are around you, you know, sharing a meal, sharing a cup of coffee, sharing a story, you know, being happy, being light, and also reflecting and remembering those people that are no longer with us and, you know, some of their traditions and some of the things that were important to them, you know, for many, many years now, I've always had a spare seat at my Christmas table for those that are no longer with us. And my children grew up knowing that because they lost their dad at a young age, that that was just our thing. We always had a seat at the head of the table for dad and whoever else that might have passed away. And my children are grown up now and they still carry that tradition on because to them, that's part of Christmas. That makes their dad still with them, no matter what part of the world they're in. And dad hasn't been here for a long time. They still feel him close at that time of the year. And they talk about the things that they do remember. And they were very little when he passed of the things that he did to make their Christmas special. And you know, they've shared that with their children and so on. So it's important to keep those traditions alive. This year, I want to leave you with a song that's one of my ultimate favourites. Look, if you're a regular viewer of the show, you'll know I'm a huge John Farnham fan. Here in Australia, John's one of our biggest selling recording artists of all time. But one of his closest friends was also a fellow Aussie who's no longer with us, is Olivia Newton-John. And the two of them spent many times, you know, doing concerts together and bringing out albums over the years. But the last album that they did together was about six years ago now, was Friends for Christmas. So I'm going to leave you with one of my favourite tracks off that, with John Farnham and Olivia Newton-John singing Santa Claus is coming to town. So you better watch out, you better be good, you better be nice and not naughty. So have a very, very Merry Christmas and have a drink for all of us here from A1R Psychic Radio. Bye for now. Merry Christmas.